Joining me today is Ford CFO Bob Shanks. Thanks for taking the time today, Bob. I appreciate it. It's a pleasure, Brian. Thanks for having us. I have to say, you know, auto sales, they've, they've come off their peak. Wall Street has been very bearish, but you guys came out and beat pretty aggressively today. Has Wall Street just gotten too bearish on the auto sector? Well, what, uh, what happened today is that we came pretty much in line with what the street had expected relative to our pre-tax profit. Uh, what we did is our fantastic tax team had been doing some work in anticipation of a potential uh, corporate tax reform uh, later this year or perhaps next year, uh, and identified some uh, foreign tax credits from losses that we had incurred uh, overseas and uh, ways that we could bring them onto the balance sheet and realize them here as deferred tax assets. So we got a really low tax rate in the quarter, mm -hmm. about 10%. I think the market was expecting something more towards 30 and then further, what we've done is uh, we've indicated that we have more work in that same space uh, to unfold over the balance of this year, which is going to give us a full year tax rate of about 15 percent and which enabled us to provide a range of EPS guidance for the full year uh, that is better than uh, what our prior guidance had been. But it's all around the tax rate. Uh, but also, too, uh, within the truck segment, uh, it's your highest margin business, if I'm, if I'm correct, but that really did well. Take us through some of the drivers. Is it just the housing market? Is it recovering in just construction more broadly? What, what's, what are the drivers to that? Well, from an external uh, standpoint, uh, certainly the economy continues to be um, you know, reasonably good. It's, it's been growing for, for uh, seven, eight years now. It's sort of this uh, two, two and a half percent rate. Housing has been progressively improving ever since we came out of the downturn. It has never yet returned to uh, the peak levels that it had been at uh, prior to that. So we think there's still more room to grow there. Uh, certainly the fact that um, uh, the fracking and uh, you know, some of the oil exploration that had kind of quieted down over the last couple of years as oil prices fell, that seems to be coming back as well. There's more rigs that are in place and, and they actually use our trucks uh, for those. So I think there's a number of external factors, but then also we've got fabulous products, the uh, Super Duty, uh, you know, the best in its segment and the F-150 as well. And certainly customers love them. We've been gaining share. Uh, transaction prices are increasing. Uh, the derivative mixes of those in terms of the series are very, very healthy. Uh, so very, very positive right across the board, external and also the products themselves. You know, we've seen that, you know, playing to your point uh, on oil prices, we've seen them come down pretty significantly. Is that a risk to the truck business going forward? Well, it's a, I guess it's a positive and a negative, right? I mean, it's, it's, it hasn't come down to the levels that it had been earlier this year. It has certainly backed off of the 50, low 50 price range that it had been at. But as best we can tell, the, uh, the number of oil rigs that are coming back uh, are continue to increase. So that's uh, a positive. And certainly the fact that oil prices uh, remain relatively low, gas prices therefore relatively low, is good for the consumer, which has also got to be good for us. And we've seen a big push. I remember covering you guys uh, at the auto show here in New York. Big push into crossovers, SUVs. What, what adjustments does Ford have to make in, in the car segment uh, given that fundamental sh shift in consumer demand? Well, this is a, a, you're exactly right. This is what consumers want. It's not something that, uh, you know, the industry driving. This is what the consumers want. I think the industry is providing, you know, great products right across the board. Certainly Ford is in terms of crossovers and utilities. But the way that we're addressing that is as we get to new model changeovers uh, in plants that perhaps had been car or part car, uh, if we need to, what we're doing is sort of from an organic uh, standpoint, just uh, transitioning that capacity with the new product into a crossover or a utility, or in some cases, a truck. And I think a really good example of that is Michigan Assembly, where today we build the Focus. Uh, in the future, the Focus will be built elsewhere, and we're going to be bringing in the, uh, the all-new Ranger pickup, and uh, that will be followed by the all-new Bronco. So that's, that's the example, best example, I think, of how we're going to organically manage this change. We, we, obviously, uh, the shift in management has been a big focus at, at Ford. When should we hear something from the team, I guess, a longer term, uh, long range plan? I believe Jim has a 100 day plan working. Mm -hmm. Yep, he's got a 100 day reassessment plan that we're all engaged in. Uh, it's around unpacking the strategy and then focusing on a revenue, fitness, capital deployment, innovation and culture. And what you, uh, we're about halfway through that period right now, and what you can expect from us is to come back to the street, come back to investors and others later this year with our takeaways from that. Mm -hmm. 
Within that, uh, are you, is Ford committed to getting more aggressively in the electric car and the self-driving space? Well, we already um, uh, are investing uh, pretty heavily in that space. We've announced $4.5 billion of investments between now and 2020 to um, increasingly electrify our product lineup. Uh, but I think you can expect going forward, certainly into the next decade, that we're going to be investing more and more because that is a transition that the whole industry is going to be going through from internal combustion engines to more electrified products and ultimately more full battery electric products. So that's a trend that's underway and it's going to continue. Two fun ones. Uh, the shot clock that got a lot of attention. Jim has implemented the shot clock. Uh, how does that unfold? How do those meetings look like when he has that work in, in there? Well, it's interesting. You know, it's, it's around the speed of decision making. And it's also to do that, you have to have clarity around who owns that decision. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the fun things that's uh, occurred since, um, uh, you know, the transition to Jim is uh, clarity around decision making and uh, clarity around a methodology that we'll use to make decisions that makes it very, very clear who owns that decision, what role others have in terms of thinking about um, uh, the inputs to that decision, but then once that um, input's in, that decision maker uh, makes that decision and off we go. And I'm already seeing uh, improvements in terms of the clarity of, of decision making and the speed of decision making. Well, thanks for coming on today, Bob. I look forward to uh, talking again soon. It's great, Brian. Thank you very much.